Hi, I am Ivan Drucker. Um, after several days, I imagine many of you know me. And uh, if you um, had looked on the online calendar, you would see that you are actually about to see two sessions in which I introduce two products. Uh, if you're looking in the paper, it only mentions Slammer, but there's also another product I'm going to talk about first um, called New Input. When I say product, this is not something you're going to sell, but it is something I have, in fact, produced and intend to distribute. And uh, today is the official debut. Uh, I have floppy disks and everything with me to, to hand out to uh, Kansas Special Limited Edition. Kansas has floppy disks, they say. Kansas has 2010 on them. Very fashionable. Hmm. <laughs> ah. Exactly. So, but you are going to have to wait for those. Ah. Ah. So it's the perfect time. So it's the perfect time. So I can put this up on eBay. Uh, the prep title. Proper. Oh, proper title. Uh, <laughs> proper title of um, the two things you're going to hear about are new input and slammer. I should mention by way of preface that I feel as though the last time I slept was in the Clinton administration. <laughs> I feel like there's a fair amount of neural misfiring at this point, so if I say something that seems as though it sounded lucid to me, but was obviously not to you, I would appreciate you stopping and, and really saying, please make some sense. It, it is the nature of, hey, let's not, let's, Let's wait and see what happens. <laughs> okay, so first off, let's talk about new input. How many of you program in AppleSoft or have programmed in AppleSoft? I That's what I expected to see. One program. What is the Apple if not the, the uh, without AppleSoft? Well, how many of you have ever used the AppleSoft input command? How many of you have noticed that uh, it's um, limited, inflexible, <laughs> sucky? That's what, it's it's. Yes. So, those of you who um, perhaps are familiar with it can for help perhaps tell me what's going to happen when I do this. All right, ready? Who's going to tell me what's going to happen? Extra ignore. Extra ignore. What the hell? All right. Let's, <laughs> how, how, how about this one? that wrote AppleSoft, but nonetheless, that being Microsoft, um, but uh, nonetheless, this obviously poses problems for users who can't enter colons, they can't enter commas, but what really struck me is that once a user is looking at an input, there is no way for them to get out of an input other than to, in fact, input, and input in the AppleSoft approved way, which is to say, without commas, without colons, and, and um, then you are going to more than likely have to do a fair bit of error checking uh, once the input is there to make sure you got from your user what you want. And then loop back, and those of you who have done this are familiar with it. So I was running an, 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 uh, an app which has lots of input prompts, and so I, and you're going to see that app later, and what I wanted was a main menu. And there's sort of a wizard that asks seven or eight questions. And I wanted the user to be able to just hit escape at any point and get back to the main menu. It doesn't seem like that unreasonable request. But is it possible on AppleSoft? No. So I set about writing what started out being a very modest little routine called the input. It is now, in terms of size, still pretty modest. But in terms of capability, in fact, pretty capable. So let's uh, see what new input can do for us. So I'm currently loading a shell of a program, which we can look at later, which contains um, a subroutine that we're going to call. In fact, we don't even have to call the subroutine, but it's just nice that it's already there. And we're going to write this program instead. Um, let's put it at 100 success. Not going to interfere with anything. Um, I'm going to be put, so first of all, let's print what we want the user to see. 
with a semicolon after the end, so it blinks after. I'm like a space after the question marks. Then what comes next? Um, well, we're going to give a couple of parameters to new input. Here's how we set those parameters. I will explain what these are in more depth, but I just want to give you a quick feel. You set a variable called KL string, and what that is is a list of the permitted keystrokes the user is allowed to type, and if the user types something else, it is simply ignored. If you choose quote quote, empty, empty string, then any keystroke is allowed. Then you can set a variable, um, a special variable called DE string. DE string stands for default entry. Default entry means that you can provide a default entry to the user right after the um, prompt. So, um, in fact, let's put these on separate lines so we can delete them a little more easily. No default entry. All right. Then, via a poke, you can specify the maximum number of characters that you want your user to be able to enter. Let's say that, well, there's no time that's going to be more than five characters, so I think five characters is a good limit. So 239 comma 5. And then finally, this is sort of a magic poke. It's magic in the sense that the, the number that you put into it, which for those of you who know binary, corresponds to the eight bits in the byte, um, toggle on or off different features, which we will look at. For the time being, we're going to turn all of the special features off, which is the default mode, so that's zero. All right, so once these four parameters are set up, and it's useful to set them up each time, but not necessary if you're confident they're already set to what they, you want them to be set to, then let's call a subroutine for new input, all right? And then there's already a, uh, an end statement in here, so I'm not going to bother putting that in. But let's print out what we get back. Oh, and that last bit. After you call, so after you go sub 50,000, we'll look at what's in that. It's very simple. Um, the user is going to be prompted for input, and what comes back is in another magic variable called st string. So there are three magic variables that uh, you shouldn't really use elsewhere um, in your program when you're using new input, which are KL string, DE string, and ST strings. Let's see what happens, shall we? What time is it? It's what, 1040 or so? Hey, it's 1040, I like that. Now, before we even turn on any features or look at any special capabilities or any of that, let's so one quick thing that you get for free without turning on any special features. What time is it? It's uh, 12, uh, no, I don't feel like backspacing all the way. I can just hit escape and clear out that entry. Hmm. Yay. Cool. Now, by default, <coughs> unless you specifically disable it, which you can, when there is no entry because you've already cleared it out or because you just started, or be then yeah, escape escapes. And then, just so that you can know that you escaped via escape, if you were to actually take a look at what's returned in ST string, it's the escape character. So you can test for uh, CHR string 27 and, uh, and know that the user escaped as opposed to say entered a return and thereby offered blank input. Now, so uh, that is the general gist. Any questions so far? Okie doke. Um, so let's take a quick look at what's in 50,000 that contains the uh, magical code. So let's look well, how much of this we're going to fit on the screen. So let's let's go. Uh, um, I'm going to fit. No, let's try a little bit less. Well, you know what? It'll fit. here is happening is uh, at uh, 50011 there's something that happens only once which is that a variable called yz string this you know it could be any variable name but I wrote the subroutine so that's yz string but if you want to roll your own it whatever you want to call it whereas you can't change the other variables st string de string and kl string are fixed so what all those periods are is a template 
Um, and what that template does is you will see as we walk from but 0011 down to ST string, that ST string gets set with that template. And what happens is you'll see this as a concatenating uh, expression here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna put ST string up in high memory, just below dots. And there's a reason for doing that. And that's because we are gonna modify ST string. If we just said ST string equals YZ string, it's gonna actually then modify this right here in the program. We do not want that. So, um, YZ string, if you know, does, currently this is set to 127 character dots. If you know you're never going to need more than 30, it doesn't have to be more than 30. Um, by doing this, we can actually get the maximum string length of 255 characters, which is not normally possible. But uh, it is. But in the real world, you may want, you may not need that many. Then, call nu. That's it, that's new input, that's the magic uh, variable. Up at the top of the program, I assigned NU to the address that NU lives at. Now, um, new in, NU is new input, as you might have guessed. Now, the good news about new input is that it is relocatable. So you can just deload it wherever it is that you feel like is a good home for it, and set NU to that, and call it from there. So you can really manage your memory in a useful way. So then what happens after that is, String concatenation is really, really, really inefficient in AppleSoft and starts eating up your high memory very, very quickly. So AppleSoft has an expression. It's not all of it's showing here. Let's list the rest of this. Now, I'm doing this a little bit backwards, it occurs to me. I'm kind of showing you the guts rather than showing you the, the high level, all the features it has. So bear with me. The, the, the more fun stuff is coming soon, although if you're Someone like me, maybe this is the fun stuff. Um, all right, so um, what's happening here is that AppleSoft has a command, which is FRE0. You can pretty much assign uh, any letter to any variable to X equals FRE0. And what that does is it goes through and makes everything nice so that any wasted string memory is no longer wasted. Prodos has a much better and faster version of it called FRE. So the routine actually checks to see uh, if you're in Prodos, that's what this is. And if it does, then it actually executes the FRE command. I could have done that with control D, but I did it. Thanks to the Twitter, by the way. But same idea. Um, anyway, so what happens is it sets up ST string in the magic way, it calls new input, input comes back from the user, ST string is set to what it needs to be. Memory is cleaned up, and then you're returned to where you call from. But if you wanted to call NU straight from your own code and clean up memory on your own terms, more power to you. You don't have to use a sub -team. You decide to recode any of this. Do you use a uh, program writer? I'm not familiar with program writer, but it doesn't let you write AppleSoft. Yeah, yeah. Right. Then yes. I mean, it's just AppleSoft. It's just AppleSoft plus a machine language routine. Um, that machine language routine can be um, just be loaded at the beginning of your program into whatever uh, memory location you choose. It is uh, 768 bytes long, so it should fit into some corner somewhere. Um, okay, so let's look at some of the cool features that New Input has to offer. So, um, on the uh, New input and slammer distribution disk, you will see that there is a program called new input.demo. So new input.demo not only allows you to exercise all the features of new input, but it also has all the documentation on it that uh, has been written thus far and maybe all that needs to be. So, oh, look, we don't want to know what time it is again. Let's um, new and let's run new input. Uh, Okay, so right up at the top, as soon as you run new input, it starts telling you of the demo that is, 
Um, you don't need to demo to run new input. I already showed you everything you need to run new input. Just the knowledge of how it works, setting variables, and making a call is all you need need to do. But so this, but this, these are the features. You can specify allowed keys in KL string. Um, you can specify the max string length, and you can specify the default entry. I already showed you all that. Um, you, it supports entries of up to 255 characters. I don't know when you would necessarily want that, but if you want it, you can have it. Accept common colon and double quote. Uh, input will not accept a uh, statement that begins with double quote, or rather will ignore the quotes. Um, it accepts the delete key on an unenhanced to weak. If you press del, you get backspace, just as if you hit backspace. It ignores all control keys except for control C. So your user can't try to do anything too quick. That's actually a feature that uh, I hope to uh, enhance in the future. I actually want to provide a toggle so that if you want to accept control keys, which will then immediately drop you out of it and allow you to process the one control key the user typed, you can. Um, as I showed you, it clears entry or it exits if there isn't any on escape. Clears wraps wrapped text after the cursor on return. What that means is you type, 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 wrap to the next line, backspace, 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 press return. In normal input, it's only going to clear to the end of the line. Whatever crud you enter to the line below is going to stay there. Not with new input, it will need to clean itself up whatever has been typed by the user. Um, and this is sort of esoteric because your user will never know that this exists unless you notify um, the user. But if you type, type, typed like this, here, let's go typical cars of, allowed cars of A, B, C, D, E, and one, two, three, four, and then if I backspace, now if I press return, it's just going to be A, B, C, D, E. But if I Apple return, you get all of them. Okay, so those are the features of New England. Now, we just also uh, allowed cars. Um, excuse me, one second. You know, I actually didn't my phone down, so uh, when it gets close to 11, can someone sort of let me know so I can shift it. Um, so anyway, default entry, um, let's say default entry is, hello, take fast. I realize you're not going to be able to type that with ABC B1234, but let it be. Okay, so maximum length, I already showed you how that works, but I didn't really show it to you, so let's say maximum length. Now, oh, look, now it's asking for options. So these are a set of eight features which you can turn on and off um, by setting zero and one. In your program, you will turn them on and off by adding values, which are in the table, which I will show you together. If you're familiar with binary math, none of this will be unfamiliar. If you're not familiar with uh, byte math, no problem. It's, I'll show you how it's done. Um, but in here, basically, you can turn these features on and off by setting these to one or zero. One is on, zero is off. Okay, so this first feature is pretty esoteric, but originally I wrote it for me in my program, so it was useful, which is you can have a special mode for address entry where the user will be limited to one through zero, but if they start with a dollar sign, then they get one through zero through nine and A through F as well. So um, there's single key entry, that's like get. Um, there's print character after single key entry, so you can make it so you get and print the character, or it doesn't actually know what that is not accurate, it's only return, which has the opportunity to be printed. It will be changed. Work in progress. Um, convert lowercase to uppercase automatically. Automatically, this is a pretty big deal, obviously, because it allows you to take input and not have to compare against uppercase and lowercase. Um, you can prohibit control C. You can prohibit exit by escape. You can clear the default text if non-return is typed. What that means is that if it shows you default text, like it came out here, and we'll see in a minute, if you set it, if the user starts typing something, it'll erase it. I think that feature is going to go away to make room for another feature. So I think it's not that important, but it's what it does now. Destructive backspace means when you either Dell or backspace rather than doing this, like you're familiar with, in fact, it erases as it goes, it fully deletes. And prohibit blank entry, so that prevents you from just hitting return or prompt and nothing there. So that's, uh, um, those are all the different kinds of things you can have new input do on any given input.
So for example, so let's set some of these options. So let's say we definitely want to turn on lowercase conversion. So you'll notice, I mean, it's a little kind of hard to follow, I guess, but it, um, each of these correspond top to bottom, left to right, so one. You'll notice this first one is kind of one or the other, depending upon how this one is set. So this really is one of uh, the first two ones. Two, three, so convert, convert lowercase to, um, to uppercase. <coughs> and let's also um, turn on destructive backspacing for fun. And let's also prohibit. Okay, so now I'm gonna press return and we get a prompt and oh, it says hell instead of hello world because we limited it to four characters. Um, now, you will notice, oh, I'm backing up and it's deleting as I go. So that's really a matter of, as a, as a programmer, your preference as to what kind of input experience you want your user to have, a, a pretty destructive one or an editable right and left one. Um, and then, okay, let's back up all the way. Well, oh, I want to enter return. Well, I can't because I prohibited blank entry. And so that can be really nice. So what this does is it just saves you a ton of error checking after each input statement because you can control exactly what you want your users to be able to type, how many characters you, it is allowed to be, whether or not it's blank. You just don't have to check for any of that stuff because new input's not going to allow it in in the first place if, um, um, let's see where I'm going with this. Uh, so, in a nutshell, that's it. Uh, there is, are there any questions so far? I, then either you're, I explained myself well or you're really bored. And I hope it's <laughs> before. Um, the, uh, so, let me just give you, so also, here, and so um, we have to type something to get out of the prompt. Oh, actually, because we didn't prohibit escape, we can escape out of here. And you know, in the in the new input demo, it shows you when you type escape because I tested for character string twenty seven and it says escape. All right, ready for the next one? Here we go. Um, rather than, does anyone want to see any of these other features specifically, or do you sort of take my word for it and get it? Okay. Okay. Um, there is help in this application that explains everything in substantial depth. Um, it reiterates the features and the options. You will notice numbers next to the options. So what basically happens is you just add the numbers together of the features you want and then you poke that number in that you get into 254. So if you want uh, a single key entry like get and you want it to also convert lowercase to uppercase on the fly, you would add 54 and 32. <coughs> 96, poke it into uh, 254 and you're on your way. In fact, to keep things clear, I just go poke 254 and then parenthesis 64 plus 32. That way I can tell at a glance exactly what, what, uh, um, what you turn it on. Bingo. That is very helpful because every little sentence completion helps her. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, so there is, but there is more uh, extensive help here about how to use a lot of this says what I've already explained. You can look into input point sub and call the subroutine. It tells you what the four parameters are, um, how to use them, and you don't need to reset them every time unless you want changes. Don't use other variables named. Uh, YZ string isn't strictly speaking true. It's, I use that in the subroutine. As I said, if you want to do your own thing there, you can. But KL string, the E string, and ST string are for both. Is there a difference between a single character entry and a one character length entry? <coughs> um, yes, on a one character length entry field, you will have to press return. On a single key entry, you will not. Um, here's uh, a description of what's on the disk, the input demo is what you're looking at, new input.sub contains the subroutine. New input is the B loadable file. It Currently, B loads at 7400, which I decided was sort of high enough to be out of the way, but low enough not to be eaten by strings unless you're doing a ton of them. And um, but you can load it anywhere. So then just change the the call um, that you used to get it. And then there's also new input dot no B load. You actually may have noticed that I actually did that. So that's the same thing as new input points up, but you don't need to B load anything. 
And the way that particular magic is performed is going to be explained in Slammer, because that's what Slammer does. Um, and so uh, it is at the expense of memory that it does that, but it is at the benefit of awesome, because you don't have um, uh, uh, a secondary file dependency that you have to be loaded every time you want a better input routine. You want a better input routine, you just pop it in the program, and it's part of your program, in, in your AppleSoft program. So yay. So that's new input dot new load is a starting point for a program like that. Um, new input works on any Apple II with Apple software or without DOS programs. Um, I explained that about ESC being used to exit. If you want numeric input, then the thing to do is just restrict KL string key list to uh, the digits and then use val on whatever comes back from ST string. You can trust that whatever comes back from val will be kosher because the user can only type numbers. Um, and then if you block return, you probably want to block return also, uh, blank entry that is, when you do that because that's not going to work well with that unless you try to block um, Next deck entry I explained. Uh, this is probably not really going to matter unless you're writing or using other machine language programs, but um, in order to be relocatable, meaning that you can load new input at any memory location, um, it uses a lot of zero page, that's the first uh, area of memory in an Apple II uh, locations, and so these are just documented so that if you're doing your own thing, you can know what you can expect to get stepped on when you use new input. And it may also potentially conflict with other utilities you might use that might use those same locations. Um, most of those locations don't need to be persistent, though. It does write over them, but it doesn't mean that it's expecting to come back and get what's in them next time, except for the two pokes that I mentioned. Um, that's the whole story. If you want updates, more information, et cetera, et cetera, you can go to this URL, where you will find absolutely nothing. <laughs> but one day, um, hopefully soon, like after I get home and sleep for 96 hours, um, there will be um, updates to new input there. Um, and you can send me an email at there. I find there to be something kind of, um, it's kind of a conceptual disconnect for me about seeing an email address or a URL on a 40 column hex screen on an Apple II, but you know, the old and new, that's why we're here. Uh, that's the whole story on new input. And so, uh, and then, there we go. So that is new input.